my hope and prayer was that they wouldn't put a picture up there, but they found one, so we're stuck with it. I don't know how I got the, the short straw, uh, got to go last, but um, I'm blessed to be here and uh, thankful to have the opportunity to speak to you. I first start, got started with this group uh, when I met a young man named Erhan. Did I say that right? Close enough. He was moved away, and uh, I, I was kind of curious about him when I first met him because he was... He was pretty tall and had really light skin and, and red hair. I thought, he can't be from Turkey, can he? And uh, so I learned, don't judge a book by its cover, and I learned tonight that he, that he goes by Carrot Top or something, too. So, uh, so uh, tell him hi if you talk to him. I, uh, about three hours ago, was sitting in the parking lot out here, and, and I was looking over my notes, trying to kind of get ready, get it in my mind before I came in, and uh, got it pretty well where I was set, and... Uh, got out of the car, put my jacket on, and and uh, right next to me on a on a sticker on the back of the car that that I was parked next to, there were two words on the sticker, and it said, "Love wins." That's all it said, black black letters on a white sticker. And then I looked at my notes again, and I thought, well, that was pretty much what I wanted to say. It's a two-word <laughs> speech. Love wins. Uh, so that would be the short version. I'm going to give you a little bit longer version. I, I was excited when I learned that the theme was about love and acceptance. Um, and I was excited because if I were to, to, to look at what that's at the heart of what I believe, what's central to what I believe as a Christian, it would be that, love and acceptance. And I, I'm kind of here to, to represent the, the Christian side of that uh, and want to share with you a little bit about uh, why that's at the heart of what I believe. and. And the main reason is it's what Jesus Christ taught and did. He taught love and acceptance, and he showed that in his daily living. Jesus said in Scripture, he said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone know, will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Three times in that short verse, Jesus says, very simply, love one another. Now I know that not everyone in this room shares the same beliefs that I have about Jesus, and that's okay, but I would hope that maybe tonight, for this short next five minutes or so, you might agree with me that from a historical perspective, Jesus was a great teacher and example. So we'll, we'll just leave it at that. And his words and example were consistent with each other, and throughout uh, his life, he taught people simply to love everyone. There, there weren't any restrictions, there weren't any conditions, there weren't any exceptions, or you know, limitations of any kind. Jesus said, love everyone. He didn't say, go out into the world and, and just, just love those people that are lovable. He didn't say, go out and, and I want you to love, but... Just love those people that love you first. And he didn't say, I want you to go out and, and love, but just love the people that look and talk and act and think just like you do. He didn't say any of that. He said love everyone. It's pretty simple. And that's what he did. He loved and accepted everyone, the rich, the poor, the young, the old, Jew and Gentile, tax collectors, prostitutes, people that, that nobody else wanted anything to do with. Jesus loved them all. He didn't care about skin color, social or economic status. He didn't care if, if about someone's race or religion or their political views or, or any other distinguishing factor. He loved everyone. And I think Jesus looked at, at every person as a brother or sister because he believed that every person was a child of God. And when I, when I look out here today, I love, love the, the diversity, and, and that's what I see. I see every one of you as a child of God. Dad talked about being inspired. I would hope that that would be what inspires us, to, to, to make that part of our common ground, that we're all born into the world pretty much the same way exceptions to that, but we're all born into the world, and we come into the world as a child of God. Although our God goes by many names, and 
in our, our prayer at the beginning. What a great way to, to enter into that, that we name God in different ways and think about God in different ways, but it's still God, regardless of the names we give God. I haven't traveled around the world to the extent that many of you have, but when I get outside this country into places where there's di different customs and traditions and, and languages and cultures, I find that, that there's a universal language that everyone seems to understand. It's not money, for those of you who are thinking that, that money is the universal language, but it's love. And then just sitting at the table and hearing people talk, I would maybe add laughter to that as being another universal language. But when we, when we get to around people who have differences and we accept them just as they are, when we make an effort to help them or let them help us, when we genuinely take time to listen, which was also talked about earlier, when we practice hospitality and sit down at a table and, and share a meal together, when we do anything that, that says that we care about others, regardless of who they are or where they're from, regardless of who we are or where we're from, that language of love is understood. Let me close with a, a statement that comes from actually a book on United Methodist Beliefs. I was kind of surprised that this statement was in something that came from the United Methodist Church. There's a couple other people laughing with me on that. But uh, this is what it said, I, and I think it says more eloquently what what I wanted to share this evening. It says, any attitude other than love fails. Resentment, whether taken in large doses or small, is poison. Pet peeves get us nowhere. Looking down on people becomes comical in the light of God. Envy is as useless as it is universal. Suspicion is a thief that robs us of friends. Indifference slowly but surely leads us downhill into the bogs of cynicism. Only love abides. There's no alternative to love. We are not free to take it or leave it. Jesus Christ commanded it. Life demands it. The grace of God supplies it. Both nations and individuals plead for the united efforts of all people for a worldwide program of compassion and wisdom based on the love of God. For God will conquer war by the love that works for peace. God will banish ignorance and prejudice by the love that strives for truth. Love is a gift, and it's upon us to share it with everyone.